Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about white powdery mould and mildew on succulent plants and uh, the, the different types of methods you can use to eliminate it. Now these are a selection of my uh, many of my succulents here. I've got a mixture of Echeverias, Graptobatalums, Graptosedums and the like. Very happy to say that the majority of them are doing very well. Lots of blooms coming up on them, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that guys. And um, I'm going to be making separate videos on the individual ones all in bloom to uh, do a little video on the individual plants as well. Happy to see so many blooms. But normally I say white powdery mildew is a very, very common problem with succulents and particularly with Echeveria types. And when I say Echeveria, I mean the whole sort of Graptobatalum, Graptosedum, Graptevias. And usually for me, it's normally a problem I have in the winter time. And uh, the reason for that is because I live here in Ireland. I'm in Northern Ireland, which has, always has a high humidity, even in the middle of summer. And in the winter, you've got the cold temperatures and the high humidity. I overwinter all of these succulents in here in the polytunnel. I keep them here all the time, even during the summer. And uh, the, the summer, I always have the door there, which is... I have wide open on the very sunny days, plenty of ventilation. So I've never had a problem with this during the summer. In the winter time, that's usually when I've had a problem and I'm going to explain what I use to treat it in the winter, which I'm going to be using to treat the ones I'm going to be talking about now as well. But the difference is, is this last winter, I should say, we got a dehumidifier, especially for polytunnels and cold temperatures, and it worked amazing. It was the first winter I went without any white powdery mildew on the succulents. Normally I have it every winter and I, and I have to deal with it and keep it under control, but I, I had no problem. So the dehumidifier worked really well because it kept the humidity in Inside the polytunnel at 50% um, and even a little bit lower which was great for the cacti and succulents and as I say I've never really had a problem in summer but this this time I've noticed I'm just going to show you here it is now July and I've noticed that I've got I'll show you there typical white powdery mildew and uh, we've had very good temperatures here the past few weeks it's been very sunny but we've also had periods of very wet heavy rain in between as well and although I say I have the door which I have wide open on the sunny days for ventilation it's still it's if the air outside is still high humidity and it's very warm temperatures it can reach 40 Celsius here in our polytunnel even on a day that's not particularly that warm outside because it's very warm and I think it's, this is why I'm having a problem with it this year. I don't want to be putting a dehumidifier on in the middle of summer. It's more of a winter thing. And obviously everything costs money if you're having to have things on all the time. Um, I think it's just been a combination of the high heat and uh, the high humidity. As you can see, there's a bit more there on there. That's what typically, typically looks like. And I'm going to show you some of our other ones that have had, had it as well. You yeah, know, this one has also had, has a little bit as well. And a bit of a pain. This is past previous uh, white powdery mildew damage. It's healed up now, but um, it's a pain. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like should you have this happen. I say it's more of a winter thing, but it can also be, as I've experienced now, um, in summer too. That's a very good example of it there. But not all of my succulents have affected. It's only just a few. But I'm going to be treating them all now with a with a spray, which I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to show you the different types of methods you can use to treat powdery mildew on your succulents. I'm going to go and explain them now. Now these are the six different types of methods that I can recommend for you, and they all work really well for powdery mildew. But there's one particular one I really do think is very very good. And first of all, I'm going to go through all the options. First one here is SB Plant Invigorator, and this is also a bug killer. It's a sort of a natural spray that has a natural sort of soap inside it, and it acts as a foliar feed as well, so it gives your plant a bit of a booster. And I've used this before in the past for powdery mildew issues, and it does work well, but it's one of them things you do have to keep using. In other words, it won't get rid of the powdery mildew, it just keeps it under control. But it's quite a safe, natural one, and it has a bit of a booster in it as well. This one here is, is rubbing alcohol, is isopropyl alcohol, 99% strength. And this is also good. I tend to put it a little bit into a bowl and dab it onto any individual parts I see that may have mildew issues. And it's very good for pest control as well. But again, a bit like the SB plant invigorate, it's one of them things you do have to keep using because it's they're not systemics, they're things that just help to keep keep pests and powdery mildew issues and any things like that under control. The next one is hydrogen peroxide. 
And this is also a very good one, particularly for powdery mildew. I would normally make a mix of about about five millilitres, about a teaspoon to about one pint of uh, water, put it into a spray bottle and spray it onto the leaves. I use that sometimes when, when before I had the dehumidifier in the winter and it seems to do really well. But again, you do have to keep repeating it because it's something that powdery mildew will keep coming back again, especially if it's down to high humidity issues or other lack of ventilation issues in your environment. The, the, this one here is a new one for me and this is actually a plant spray that I got this year and um, it's very very good kiss of death uh, bug spray it works very well with mealybugs and, and um, also especially with aphids and things like that but it's also very good you can also use it on mold and powdery mildew as well because it's it's got a very very strong pepper and that acts as a very good fungicide so that works well but it, again, I haven't actually tried this on powdery mildew yet, so I cannot give my opinion on it. It's just that this is another option. And I made a whole video when I got this bug spray. So if, if you want to find out a bit more about this bug spray, do check it out. I'll link the video to that one up above. The fifth one here is a, a fungicide. Now, this one is called Rose Clear Ultra, and this is one we have in the, the UK and Ireland. It's a very popular fungicide. I think it's copper-based. And this works absolutely fantastic for fungus and mold issues because it's a systemic so when you spray it it takes it into the plant takes it in and um, it, it seems to really work obviously powdery mildew and all things will come back eventually but it's very very good but again it's a chemical and I try and avoid using chemicals as much as possible because sometimes you get a bit of leaf scorch especially on echeverias they're very sensitive to chemicals so I'd only really use this in an absolute extreme um, measure if I had to and it, this one also controls insects as well because it's systemic so it acts as a fungicide and a pesticide but you can use any type of systemic fungicide that um, works well as I say I only use this as a last resort and then the sixth one and this is my favorite and I recommend this all the time is neem oil and uh, this I personally find very very good for all types of um, mold, fungus issues, and even for insect pests, it works very well. It is something you have to keep using because it's not a systemic. Um, as I mentioned with these other ones, you do have to keep using it. But if you, if you use it regularly, it is absolutely brilliant. It works very good with powdery mildew and fungus and very good with things like mealybugs and, and spider mites and things like that too. And what I normally do at this time of year in the polytunnel anyway, I would normally be using it on the majority of my cacti just to prevent mealybug and spider mite. I would use it usually about once every two to three weeks as a prevention. And since I've been using it, it works very, very good. I don't use it during the winter because I keep the polytunnel as dry as possible. Um, and that's when I sometimes notice mealybug comes back again when I stop using it. So this does definitely work. The same with powdery mildew issues. And this is what I'm going to be using today day and because my my succulents already have powdery mildew I'm going to be using this and then I'm going to be reapplying it in about five days time reapplying it again in another five days time and then I'm going to leave it reapply it in another 10 days time and then I'm going to use it probably weekly um, for the next up to about six weeks just to make sure it's completely eliminated this is pretty harmless some people say that they use it and they find they do a bit of scorch on their succulents so you do have to be careful i would recommend not using it obviously in direct sunlight if you use it very early in the morning or of a late of an evening when the sun has completely gone down and when i say early in the morning i don't mean an hour or two before the sun comes up make sure you do it very early it's just gone six o'clock in the morning here i'm, I'm up early every morning because i have to so much i have to do with all the plants so this is perfect for me the sun won't be coming up until at least half nine ten o'clock so if you spray this in direct sun you can suffer from leaf scorch and also with echeverias and succulents in general the ones especially the ones that have the little the little hue on the leaf it sometimes it can cause that to go away as well so you just have to probably try a few first or a leaf or two before treating the whole plant personally i've not really had any issues my um i had a lovely sort of purple i have a purpley one echeveria uh, metallica and that when i sprayed it did make the hue go a little bit matte um, looking instead of having that lovely sort of shimmer but 
I'd rather that than have pests and mould issues. Um, any mould issues will outgrow and the new, the new growth will be absolutely fine anyway. So I personally have not had a problem with, with neem oil as such, but I know a few people have. So if you're using it on particularly sensitive plants, I would just recommend doing a, a leaf or two first before treating the whole plant or plants but that's I think this is very good and as I say if you're you're very concerned there's lots of other options as well they're all very good a little plant sprayer that I make up for the measurements so I'm going to be making up some of the neem oil now and uh, then I'm going to be applying it onto the uh, the succulents and although a lot of the the echoviewers that haven't got the powdery mildew there's only some that have I'm going to treat the whole collection because it it's powdery mildew can often be in the air and stuff so it's good to treat treat the whole collection too and i have made i have made a complete video on how to use neem oil including how to make up the measurements how to mix it up so i don't need to do that in this video i've, I've already done that many times so i'm going to link up above to a video i made on how to make neem oil as a pest and also as a um, mold and fungus control I'll link that video up above and down below in the video description. So I'm going to get mixing this now and then applying it to the succulents. Now I've made the spray up with the, the neem oil and as I said give it all a really good shake and I've made the whole video on how to use it. And then what I'm going to be doing then is giving, starting on the back and giving all of these a thorough, thorough spray. Make sure the complete leaves are completely covered there now that's some all sprayed with the neem oil and as I say I'm going to uh, repeat that again in five days time then another five days time and uh, then I'm going to keep up with it probably about weekly for the next six weeks and it should prevent it not only should kill the um, the white powdery mold it should prevent it from coming back as well so as I say there's many other options as I explained in this video they all work well but um, I always find the neem is great. Not everybody likes the smell of neem, so it's good that there's other options on how to treat this rather annoying thing. So um, if you have powdery white mildew on your succulents, and hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Whenever I, I experience problems with my own plants, I always like to make little videos to help other people out too. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And for lots more tips and tricks on how you can care for and grow cacti and succulents, then please do subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Desert Plants of Avalon. And for lots more tips and tricks also on how to care for and grow cacti and succulents, I've got a whole care, care um, range on there. Do check out my website, Desert Plants of Avalon. Com. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.